Hello and welcome to Talk Art. I'm Sally Rain and I will be your host as we delve into the world of the artist and the art that's all around us. Talk Art is sponsored by the Silicon Valley Open Studios. During the first three weekends in May, hundreds of local artists open our studios to the public. For more information, you can go to the website svos.org or pick up one of the SVOS directories that are in libraries now. Our guest for Talk Art is Alison Roth. She is a former Peace Corps volunteer in Cameroon, Africa. And prior to that, she was, worked as the assistant to the director of the Cantor Art Center at Stanford University. And there, she worked as a collaborating curator for exhibits of African art. And she is here to introduce us to two wonderful African artists that she met while she was in Cameroon. So welcome, Allison. Thank you. So happy to be here. Yes. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about your experience in the Peace Corps. How did you meet these artists? Well, I was brought to um, Cameroon to be a teacher of science, uh, secondary science. But we were encouraged to look for secondary projects that were in alignment with our interests. And I'm always interested in art and artists. And I happened also in my other life to be a cellist. And I heard that uh, there was a young man, a, a painter, who had a, happened to have a cello in his house. Oh, wow. And I thought that was pretty amazing to go all the way to kind of out of the way Cameroon and find somebody with a cello. So I called him up, and he said, yeah, you, what, you're welcome to have it while you're here. Wow, so that's I, excellent. So that's how I met John Samuel. And we hit it off right away. And I, he started telling me about his painting and his passion for painting. And there were many other volunteers who had purchased paintings from him. So his work was all around in houses, I knew. So that's how I met him. Excellent. So he is a wonderful man that I spoke to on Skype last week. And we recorded it. And so we have an introduction that he would like to introduce himself. So let's take a look at that that's now. That's great. My names are Lee Nyonfikala Jean Samuel, and uh, I'm a Cameroonian artist, and at the moment I'm based in the United Kingdom, in Wales, precisely in Bangu. I do African cultural paintings. That is the basic kind of painting that I do, inspired by my culture and the ways of life of my people. I have, however, experimented through different styles of painting, like realism, Every young artist begins from trying to paint people exactly as they are, or nature, the environment, or things like that. But at some point, you want to do something with your imagination, and that opens you up to other alternatives of uh, the art world. And uh, I wasn't an exception. I have experimented through abstract painting, uh, impressionism, expressionism, surreal paintings, and at the moment, I can see myself as an abstract figurative painter. But my basic inspiration is still my African culture, my background, because my main art is my life, what I know from when I was a child. I use the medium of painting as a means to tell the world my story. Presently in Wales, I have a plan to create a cultural center for African art, whereby I will continue to promote African art in Wales. That was my intention in Cameroon. But because of the socio-political environment, I'm not able to do that. But now in ways Wales, I'm going to do that. I have partners in Wales who want to make sure that my dreams of trying to expose African art to a desire to a great level should actually be realized. I believe that in a few months to come, the African Art and Culture Center in Wales would be open, and I will be like the founding director, and my audience would be all African artists, not just Cameroon. No, I will be dealing with artists from East Africa, West Africa, Central Africa, North Africa. Any African artist or any African mind that is creative would be welcome into this platform. So that is where I am at the moment. Wonderful. So tell us a little bit about him and what you think of his art. 
I think he's the, one of the most passionate painters I've ever met. He just can't stop. And even though he studied economics and business and, and thought about going into development work, he's always painting. He just, and he's, he's experimenting with different styles and he's very open to that. So he's just exploring and I just love that about his work. Well, excellent. So we have some images that show where he is in Africa mm -hmm. and then also some of his artwork. So. Let's take a look at those now, and you can tell us about them. OK, great. So first, I thought it would be good to situate precisely where he, he and the other artists we'll be talking about are from. They're from the county seat or division head, uh, seat of this particular buoy division in the northwest region of Cameroon. Cameroon is a West African country just below Nigeria. And you can see it's kind of like a chicken shape. And the northwest is in the top tail of the chicken. It's hard to see by this map. But so Kumbo is the county seat, and that's where these men are from. This is, um, we took a walk. We had been in the car and seen this cut in the road and just mar marveled at the colors right. of the the earth there. So uh, about a couple weeks later, we decided to take a walk to that cut and really appreciated the pigment. He's, we took some samples to see if he could do something with those colors. And here he is just starting the painting. The first painting you saw in the video, right. this is the beginning. So he wanted to show me his process. And I came with my camera, and we just I took snapshots along the way. So this is him sketching it out. Step two, is he putting color on? And um, it looks like he's using the colors from the road cut. He That's isn't, but he's ins obviously right. been Inspired. influenced by the color around him. And uh, there he is laying the imagery on top. And I could say a little bit about this painting. The finished painting, the subject are, is uh, two hunters who are out and behind them are their ancestors. So in this culture, people are very still connected to that idea of their lineage and where they come from, and that their ancestors are with them and protecting them as they go. So this is one of the styles that he's experimented with a lot of cubism. So this is a reclining woman um, in that kind of cubist style. But it looks very African, though. It does. So whatever he does has an African flavor. And the imagery comes, but it's more the technique. So he's combining the African subject matter with maybe a different a technique that he has been influenced by in looking at Western painting. Interesting. This is another one. This is a musician. You can kind of see in the middle. The, the colors are fantastic, really. Yeah, so he's using like very bright magenta mm -hmm. and, and yellow and blue to create. It does, it looks, it reminds me of like George Braque, only yes, with color. Exactly. So there's, there's his absolute persona in the painting, even though he's experimenting with styles he may have been influenced by else, from elsewhere. Here's another one in, in that kind of cubist idea, mother and child. And the mother and child is very important in the, in the African culture. So uh, women are always with their babies. And holding them that mm -hmm. way. So now we're going to another place. Um, John Samuel has done a lot of traveling. And for a time, he was in South Sudan. Um, he had a partner who was doing development work there. And he has spent some time developing relationships with development projects. And while he was there, he started painting from the life he saw there. So these are Sudanese women. And in fact, this style became so popular that a lot of aid workers and people from Europe liked the painting so well that they were asking for more and buying them so they could take them back with oh, them excellent. as mementos of their time in Sudan. This is another pair of Sudanese women, a little bit different style. A little more colorful. colorful. Very colorful. And when I think of African art, I think of color and very bright mm -hmm. colors. Mm -hmm. So here we're going back to his own culture. 
the people he's from are called Nso, the N-S-O with a glottal stop at the end. So the next series of paintings, including this, are coming out of his visual memory of life there. So even though people in Kumbo are wearing Western clothes and driving cars right. and carrying around smartphones, you also see women carrying their babies with a wrapper on the back and things on their heads. So they're really living feet in both times. This is true to life. Here are men in the village, it's sort of a village scene, a little bit surreal, and the men who are probably gathering for a men's society meeting. Interesting. Also this fantastic color, more women carrying on their heads. And that looks very African to yes. me, the shapes of the heads and the way the way they, they carry themselves, themselves, absolutely, yes. And, it, and in order to walk with something like that on your head, you have to have some amazing posture, so. And women are still carrying absolutely. water on their Absolutely, men and women. You can see yes. a man carrying a whole log on their head walking down the road. Wow. And, um, it's quite amazing. And just another Look at this, this image. style is fantastic. I really like this painting with the three-dimensional, but it's walking away. It's very mm -hmm. intriguing as to where are they going and what are they doing? And they're this? wearing traditional clothing and probably carrying, what the man is carrying on his shoulder is probably a vessel uh, probably made of a gourd or calabash that's containing palm wine, which is a ritual drink. Interesting. And those, they make these carriers of bamboo that to, to hold the, the palm wine vessel. Interesting, wow. Are those colors that you would normally see in art around the area, or is that, or on buildings? Is that not so much? You see it in people's style. dress. People dress fairly, very colorfully, um, but the traditional arts were not so colorful. Except if you see the textile behind me, that indigo is a royal cloth, but mostly the carvings are wood, and a lot right. of the traditional arts are done on. You know, they're done on gourds and they're black on kind of natural colors. So this colorfulness is coming out of a different um, tradition. It's kind of meeting the African style with a more colorful current life. Well, and then you said the, the tapestries are royal colors tapestries that mm -hmm. you have. So the tapestries here are from the area that you were Yeah, from? so the one, the one behind you is a royal cloth. It's um, made with indigo, tie-dye and indigo, and only people with a royal title are supposed to wear that. And it's full of symbolism that I don't quite, I couldn't tell you the story right. of all the, Im the iconography on it, but some of them I can tell you there are gong shapes and gourd shapes and drinking palm wine cups that are used by title holders and things like that. Cool. Well, let's move on to the second artist, Vernacia Salamo. So tell us a little bit about him. How did you meet him? So um, one of my projects while I was there and continue to be involved in is to try and create a museum for this very important kingdom. So there are a, quite an array of artifacts, important artifacts, and the palace or the kingdom does not have a proper home and a way to display those things. So they've been wanting to create a museum for decades, and I thought I would apply my experience to helping them get to there. Wow. So we formed an association, an official association, and we needed a logo, so we had a contest. Oh, excellent. And about seven different artists submitted their ideas to, for a logo for our project, and Vernacius won the prize. And we are using his logo today. Oh, excellent. So that's how I got to know him, and then I learned that he was painting and doing all kinds of other crafts on decorating clothing and shoes, and I just thought I was very impressed with his artistry and his seriousness as a young artist, and I just wanted to give him as much support as possible. Well, excellent. Uh, so we also had a fabulous conversation on Skype about his art. He spoke about what his influences, so let's take a look at that now, and he can introduce Great. himself. Hey, my, my name is uh, Salamu Venasu Sotsuka, and my, my artist's name is Skidovi Arts. 
So I'm the director of uh, Skido V Arts House in, in Cameroon, and we're based in, in Bamenda. But for now, for now, we have some few problems in the country, so we are, we are forced to move to the other town. Uh, I would like to first begin by, by thanking uh, you, Sai, for giving me this opportunity to, to be with you today and to talk about my own talent that, uh, that God has given me. So I'm, I'm very much grateful, and I will, I will say art is not something, it's, it's, it's very good, it's good to go in it, because art is life. For me, art is life, art is everything about life to me. So I, when I hold my brush, I, I, I know that what I'm doing is something that will always make me feel happy. So we should not neglect art, but we should go in for art, for, for art is the real thing in life. I, I have I, I used to have so many in mind, but for now I'm trying to work on on coloring and African art, like a piece beside me that I just started today. I, I take just two colors to do a full painting, and then and and also I'm I'm also specialized in in portrait paintings, and and also with that I, I'm I'm really trying a way to. Do so have some training. Do have some training on of, of people that like to train people in artwork, because you know art is something by me. Art is so, so uh, it's something that it makes you to feel who you are. Like if you're not, yeah. If you if you if you if you like have some problem and you decide to just to take a a board and 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 start painting. Uh, for me, I believe what you're thinking of will go away and you feel your mind being good. It's an experience, and that's what I always do. There he is. And there you can hear his children in the background, and yes. he's living in So much life, life around. Oh, yes. yes. So he's a very young artist. He is very young. So yes. and in his 20s, I believe, yes. So um, he, we also have some images of his art. So let's take a look at those. It's very, very much more abstract and mm -hmm. very interesting work. So. So this is um, the portrait you saw him starting in the video. Here he is um, getting a little further along in it. So he has a lot of people asking him to do portraits. So this is one of the commissioned yeah. portrait that he, he did. And there it is finished. Proud artist. Yes. So. This was, I love this project. You saw, I think in the video, a picture of him on, on a ladder painting it. There was an arts festival. He's living in the major port city of Douala. That's the largest city in Cameroon. It's called the financial capital. It's where most of the business is done. And he was asked to do this mural on a, the wall at a high school that was part of a big festival. So that was quite a coup for him to be asked to do that. Yeah. And you can see all the, the masks, and that's a really, masking is still very strong tradition in that culture. I love the way that the eyes line up. And mm -hmm. it's, it's abstract, but you can definitely see the African features, and it's very well done, and all of those people. Are there many, many people in the cities in Cameroon? Yes, when you go? They're, they are. They're, they're big cities, yes, especially Douala. Very lively. So this is um, a style. He's, he, he mentioned that he's getting into color, he's, and this use of color, uh, two colors, right. really, basically two colors. It's quite striking. And it's a musician. You can see him in the middle. And then around are the masks. And um, well, talk a little bit about, about masks in Cameroon. How are they influential to the artists? So masks are part of. It's not just the the, the mask itself, but it's a character, or it's a spirit. So if you're walking around in the city town where he's from, and you see see the mask, the masquerade. You are not looking at a person. You're looking at a spirit. And wow. they're embodying a certain characteristic. And even now, people are definitely respectful of those things. You don't approach them. You don't talk to them. 
they're very, and they represent different qualities depending on which, what the mask is, and you know what it is when you see it. So, so the masks in his art have huge significance They do have, then. now these aren't specific, but the idea of the mask right. is very important. So this was a painting he really wanted to include here because uh, when there's conflict, they're really looking for peace. And this is the subject of this painting to him is when peace comes to the land and the oppression is, is uplifted, the people will jubilate in his own words. So the jubilation is the man in the center is playing a traditional string instruments. There are dr you can see drummers, right. you can see people dancing. And this is meant to be celebratory and hopeful that yes, uh, the piece the that will come. The colors are hopeful. Yes. And it still looks mask-like. Like Absolutely. Well, the mask will always be part of the culture. Right. If you have a, an important event, the masks will appear. They come out and they're part of the, the party. Interesting. So another way he's kind of expanding his reach and, you know, not everybody can buy a painting, but he's putting his imagery on t-shirts like this. You can see the mask again. Yeah, interesting. And um, I'm sure that if you wanted a particular picture, you know, he does a lot of requests, things like that, so. Cool. And then here, I'm very interested in this, um, decorating tennis shoes and other shoes with very traditional symbols. So the symbols that you see on these shoes, you will also see on the clothing and on the, the drape on the table. These are very traditional embroidery symbols. One of the- Are they specific to the culture of to, the Cameroon uh, people? To, yes, especially the Tikari people who spread out over the Northwest and the West region. But these um, interlocking chains and people wear a lot of embroidered clothing. So that's just reflected in putting them on contemporary shoes is really fun. Yeah. And he does the painting. He does the, the painting on the, on the shoes. Excellent. Those are beautiful. Wow. So these two artists, are you planning on working with them in the future? Well, I'm going to keep in touch. Right. Absolutely. They're friends of mine. And the young man sees me kind of like an auntie and somebody who he can um, get advice from. And I'd love to help them as much as I can because every artist needs a little bit of a lift sometimes. Oh, exactly. And John Samuel, in terms of his art center, it's something that I'd like to be part of if I can. And I think it's a wonderful idea. So. so yeah, the idea of having more than one African culture represented, that was very important to him. Can you talk a little bit about why that would be important? I think John Samuel is an international kind of person. He's spent time in the Netherlands. He's been educated in England. He's been to Sudan. He's tra and he, that idea of African solidarity is very important to him. And I think the continent really does need that kind of, it's like the EU, right? The EU, the, Europe is stronger when the countries work together and Africa will be stronger when it can unify itself to some degree. Not to erase the differences, the cultural right. differences, but you know, unity is strength and diversity is of interest to people. Right. So. Well, excellent. Yeah, and so the artists can hopefully lead the way. At exactly. Least talk about I'd these like issues. I'd like to think that's true of for all of us, right. actually. Exactly. So tell us a little bit about what you're working on and how, where you want to go in the future with this idea. Well, the museum idea in the community where I was, I'm still very. And what is the name of that community? It's again? called Kumbo. Kumbo and it's in the Bowie Division, Bowie County. But Kumbo is the center and it's mm -hmm. the seat of the Paramount Kingdom. So it's a very important community. And I would love to see a museum happen there. The times are not very good for that to happen right now. So in the meantime, I've been working on what we call a virtual museum, 
which is a website that displays the objects that would be put into the museum eventually. Mm -hmm. They're part of the palace collection. They've been inventoried and photographed, and we're, you know, can tell the story. And actually, more people can act, can have a look and learn from it. Right. Being online, anybody can go to that virtual museum. So, but the kingdom is not a kingdom per se. Now, there's a different government. This is a historical kingdom. Well, that's kingdom. the interesting part thing that happens in Cameroon. So, the traditional kingdoms still have a lot of importance, even though there's an overarching contemporary government right. over the whole country. They've had to make accommodation for the traditional authorities, which mm -hmm. have pretty much jurisdiction over traditional matters. But also, you know, everyday disputes can be resolved in the kingdom, not necessarily the court. And sometimes people are more respectful of their traditional hierarchy than they are of the government. So they've had to, Cameroon has made, had to make accommodation to this importance of these kingdoms and right. in in bringing the country to get together. So I, I think that will always be true. And they're very attached to their particular cultures. Mm -hmm. Cameroon is made up of over 250 language groups. Wow. So the diversity is immense. Amazing. And they, uh, many of them are keeping their language going. In fact, they just published the Bible in the lamp salt language of these people. Wow. So, and so you're working to help help keep that keep culture, culture alive and let people know more about it. Wow, so well, what really a wonderful use of your time in, in the Peace Corps, teaching science on the one hand and then helping to preserve the culture. Yes, it was very a very rich time for me. And, Excellent. Uh, well, thank you so much for introducing both artists, Jean Samuel Mifikela and Vernacia Salamo, and really enjoyed speaking with you today. Thank you, it was my pleasure. Yes, thank you for being on Talk All Art. right.